Ladies and gentlemen of the BDMA jury, did you happen to catch Mr. Dorino Burns pulling ahead of T. Wood in a fight that the odds were close, but I didn't, I didn't see anyone winning so convincingly. Um, bit surprised, though. Dorino has shown strides as of late, especially the striking department. So sometimes a great striking coach, in this case Henry Hoof, just shows someone the importance of the 101s. For example, what works best in the open stance. Um, obviously, these are <laughs> mostly examples of that. For example, the right straight, the left hook, and right body kick, or 2-3 middle 10 for the orthodox fighter would be some of some of the strikes you're always looking for. Same so, same for southpaws, they're 2, 3, and 10s to the body. So sometimes early on, pre-Reebok trunks, you'd see a little bit of sloppiness from Durinho, or uh, tough little one, I think it stands for in Portuguese. But he had some good ideas, just no fakery yet, really. Um, and that's where someone like Henry Hooft comes in, comes into play. And, and I know Henry, and I, I train under him, so I, I know his tendencies. So other times he's tightened up and, and accurate, like here against uh, a guy from Montreal. I can't think of his name. Uh, what, what is that guy's name? It's awful. Oliver Oviar. I don't know. Under the tutelage of Hooft, his kick game is good and getting better, though often thought of as an overhand right kind of a striker. This is clearly not the case for present day um, Gilbert. A lot of calf kicks. There it's coming up a little bit. And there's a nice high 10 he, he was throwing. That was earlier too, but he wasn't putting them together enough to land. So he's in a, Henry's not a trick sort of coach. He's all about defensive responsibility. And these Achilles kicks that he's throwing... Um, calf kicks, whatever you want to call them, are, are so prevalent. Uh, progress progressively, Burns has learned how to be more patient and selective, like here following up on another low kick that clearly did damage. So there's a, a spin around. Uh, see how he kind of pulled on that four before coming in full? So increasingly, he's blending his kicks with punches, even the more difficult way of like round, round kicks into linear punches. That's kind of the harder way rather than straight kicks into linear punch or straight kicks into round punches. So he's he's taking the, the road less traveled to do it. They're all good ideas, but they get better as time goes on. So remember this for later. That's a nice, long and accurate three. And he's a good, good counter puncher against the kicker. He's again are very dutch kickboxing you know in principle where you, you always kind of learn to kick the puncher punch the kicker kind of thing um henry calls this the shield defense you see his hands out like that opponent attempts some type of wrist grab here which earns him a, a nice little nap after some crispy hooks by dorino here we go one two three it's an overhand four but Wonderful, perfect execution of slip fainting. By first slipping the punch, then bringing his legs close together to feint that shot prior to a hard set on his right foot, he steps out with his left. And relaxation is paramount here in order to get that to be such a through punch. You can really see it well in that bird's eye view. So Gilbert um, not only has one of the premier MMA striking coaches in the world, but he also has Neil Melanson and Greg Jones for grappling to go along with his pedigree of a bronze medal at, at Abu Dhabi and and I think three or four IBJFF um, gold medals as well. So one more time, this this beautifully timed duck under double leg and instead of converting to a high C, it's a body lock into like a rear waist drag. In catch, they'd likely call this a sit out in Sambo they do. Um, see how he gets kind of the back right there, his, his head's up in the armpit. Like almost as if he just did a duck under. So sometimes the mistakes will look intentional, like this this low ankle pick right here. See how he brings that up. The double leg was actually a, a mistake, and but he's gonna fold those legs right in to this sequence. It's a great example of like an explosive yet cerebral gaunt ground game so he stretches him out first in order to get the back control you see the hook in and there's an interesting rnc attempt by allowing like a fall into the choking arm as you see here and see how he's manipulating his hands and head it's showing the control of someone at that level so wrist control is key throughout as here he lets the opponent's energy lead his hand overhead into a kimura grip or in catch wrestling what they call a hammer lock um, and he'll sit out into an arm bar from there. Beautiful stuff from the Kimura grip. Uh, here's a crossfoot belt. Well, you can certainly uh, 
pause this and read yourself what I what I wrote up here. This is just about the diversity of Gilbert's uh, grappling currently. Um, but what I one of the things I really want to focus on is his natural sense of rhythm and or timing. Um, it's important, and especially for striking development, and the fact that he's added such high-level wrestling to such a high-level jiu-jitsu game uh, that was already prevalent. So, Fink Jab and a Snatch Single converts to a high C, to like a seatbelt kind of a slam here. This is very Colat inspired. Beautiful stuff there. Again, against the guy's name, I'm not even bothered pronouncing. More seasoning against another spicy grappler and Gar Garner Nelson. Dorino likes to kind of do scoop doubles, like some people call these judo double legs. Although he throws his feet off ground a lot, you'll see in th when he does double legs. It's not the type to pull guard. It's fantastic timing on shots and his feints prior to technique really come into play often he likes he likes a lot from the body lock as well but you'll see see there how his legs kind of leave the ground on his double it's just it, it's his way of doing it his back takes are absolutely brilliant um especially again in an mma context where he just helps slide an arm in real quick like that and as the opponent the opponent gets the shoulders to the mat he'll turn towards non choking arm Burns times like a torso pull with buck to the side of his right leg underneath, all while maintaining the hook on the left side. Just a very high level ground game. Now see here he bucks up, that right foot right there slides in, and now he can roll with it, maintaining that seatbelt grip. So he can go like belly down, back mount into a body triangle. See that right there? Now you're just going to lock it up, uses that left hand to post. Now this person is using good de defense, no, no doubt, but the, the opponent gets himself a little bit safer only to have... Gilbert go to a Kata Gatame, like arm triangle, belly down. And as he's bucking up right there, snatches that arm. Now he's just got to spider web the leg. And he can do kind of a Henzo style rollout into arm bar. Beautiful stuff here. And it's just, it's control really at the end of the day. The triangulation of the legs blocks escape routes and makes his position more movable. Like he can move around his hips better. It's a great way to break um, clasped hands too as well. Um, I, I like triangulating the legs for, for the arm lock. And he, here, this is uh, fast forward to current day-ish versus fellow jiu-jitsu ace and Damian Maya. Right away, we see those those nice calf kicks to start. Henry calls this defensive posture akin to like a peekaboo for MMA, the roof. So there's the shield and the roof. Both are Henry hoofed isms And of course, Maya got his takedowns, but like all of his coaches preach and the major groundwork of jiu-jitsu will tell you, defense is number one so he obviously has it in spades here he's threatening a heel hook but Maya's eyes have to turn off of him literally he switches hands and hips to get back to standing from where he was so it's like he's threatening a knee bar into an ankle lock now he just comes up and it's almost as though he sprawled out into a single so Maya's back takes out the stuff of legend usually finishing in submission but not so much here with Burns a little bit of a different story it's, it's just a it's awareness it's experience it's world-class jiu-jitsu really it's right hand answers the phone as the left loosens on the body triangle so after using both to get the shoulders to the mate does like a jeff glover kind of deep half escape see here right and left he's got that frame up on the armpit up and out right through the legs and because I know Hooft is big on strike retraction I'd assume they notice on film why he's got this long jab that stays pronated bang beautiful stuff off that the end was kind of rudimentary there one more time we'll slow it down a little bit but as you see the jab stays out right there now he parried it a tad onto his own shoulder before throwing that but that that strike can't stay out there for a counter like that so as impressive as the ground defense and one hitter quitter power were um you know especially on a one former 185 title contender Ty Tyron's a, a whole new animal with striking and grappling that are, you know, the grappling not so much lately, but the striking certainly has put many a man into a comatose state. So Burns was aggressive right from the jump, taking center ring. Woodley oddly tends to be too patient at times, and uh, when he's most successful, it's when he was Harry Carey. So him being tentative isn't the best idea, I, d I don't think. Um, trying to take out the legs early, though, this this wasn't flush. It was certainly smart as an idea. Um, he's, he's, he's going low, but upon retraction, when you use the same tell to throw a power for and head off, off center line, it, this is where you'll find some success. Uh, this was first round, and it was early, too, that he dropped him. So 
Dropping him that early might have been the single most important element of the fight, honestly, if I had to dissect it like that. Uh, Tyron waits for jabs to counter with his right hand, he likes to parry off of him, but only Burns was the one fainting his ones to go off center line bang for that four like that. And this is a lot of this striking that you'll see in this, especially in the clinches, is, is really nice. So after the flurry, he uses this collar tie and hand on bicep clinch. But notice the eff efficacy lies in his shot selection being opened up by pivoting, which is kind of like what you see when you see him pot clinch working in Thailand. So see how he's pivoting backward to his own right into that right hand and knee? It's really nice stuff. This is a better angle of it. Um, and you can see the collar tie aiding the strikes in a Newton's kind of second law of motion sort of way. This long three here, um, it, it comes behind. It looks like a missed strike at first, but it really was used as more like a collar tie mechanism, like in order to get there. And again, to mention Thailand, something that's often taught is to strike a little bit past the head, missing on purpose in order to get a position like that. So then he can use that right there from from there he's pulling him into that strike that it was actually more like a shovel shovel for i guess His hips are square because i'd never seen burns go five i worried about this uh 15th hammer fist here um a little bit much you're like ah, he's going for the kill he's gonna gas out but he did a nice job you know sliding into mount attempting a guillotine and a rolling arm bar I believe anyway and they were all defended pretty well tyron still had his his wherewithal at this point really nice athletic move there to get out but at this point i wonder how many besides myself were thinking like is could the fight change here potentially right because woodley's got a new kind of energy to him here he is ready to go he's gonna throw some big strikes not 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 so much said burns goes for that you know he channels his inner wonder boy with that rear leg round chamber into a sidekick high that's like black belt and kempo having ish um right there nice stuff either way if you haven't noticed by now um smart's probably did by the title Dorino, aka little tough guy has virtuosic like timing and i hadn't seen it in this capacity until this this fight in particular so first the low kick then the distance liver kick in tight three inside of Tyron's four. The cadence was slow, adagio like, and the timing is what leads all strikes into their efficacy. So, timing beats all. You know, like I say, speed beats power. Well, timing beats speed. Uh, this is technically wonderful. Gilbert steps in to shorten the trajectory of the long hook, and immediately upon landing flush, pulls same side out and away to his own left with his hands up, evading uh, T Woods. Always dangerous. Huge four there. And you can really tell there when it's slowed down. That's that's beautiful striking. Tyron certainly had some moments early that had made things interesting, though his, his lack of kicks puzzled me somewhat, considering you know his once go takedown defense. This blitz through the roof there. Right? See that four kind of caught not off that long six and that faint job, but the postures to me are telling here. And uh, there were a few of these sloppy-ish exchanges as well that I'm obviously not going to show. This was both of them playing defense, kind of, and neither landing. So a nice no-sell nine high here, and uh, last-second defense as well. Tyron gets his hand up just in time. See, it's like he look, it looked like he thought something else was coming, but he was able to get back in time. So interestingly, because Tyron was looking for that jab parry into right hand, Burns showed great IQ putting a four right behind it, and then going ex exit stage right afterward. See that? Off. And he's he's out of danger going weak to Tyron's weak side, his strong. Um, and speaking of timing, right, right here, look at that beautiful double leg by a jiu-jitsu guy against an NCAA All-American impressive making him pay on the way up to this felt right here a bit like the Usman fight you know those those little those little short zings so in moments like this exchange of long threes where fighters pride is kind of driving them into that payback mode the last thing you want to do if you're burns anyway is, is play along and instead he's just staying calm landing those clean so subtle but brilliant Reed Dorino extends left arm like another one four overhand like that see that but he peels to punch and there's a better angle of it. It did did land certainly, and the calf kicks. Boy, they are, they, are these things everywhere now. Is it just me? I get it. It's a safe strike, but boy, oh boy, it's almost like every fight. This version here, we'll call it jabbing burns. Maybe not. It doesn't really jabbing burns doesn't work. This guy, the way he's moving right there, that guy's dangerous. This is all I'm trying to say. 
Uh, this sliding knee Senchai style is like a distance destroyer, followed with a crispy little 3-2, 3-3, three, 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 and then the old Gaethje 4 there, which, like Gaethje's against Barboza, did drop. And see that? That knee comes in. Beautiful 3-2, three, 3-3, three, three, uh, one four fate, and that big 4 as he's moving to his strong side. Time recovered quickly, but ended up in an arm and guillotine with like a Darce-like leg hook where you can fold in. Putting spinal, spinal compression into the mix, if you will. Now see right here how, how he is. Tyron's left hand is trapped completely. So with his, with said hand trapped, this could have easily been turned into an anaconda, maybe a Dars, or repositioned into an arm and guillotine. And with a squeeze like I assume Burns has, um, he's lucky to get out of the round like that. So as it wound down in championship rounds, Will he look perfectly okay just riding it out? Maybe occasionally trying for a home run or hoping one would walk in the door. If there was a crowd for this and I just, you know, I went into straight speed up, I think they would have been restless to say the least. And he's not letting it go, Burns, by any stretch. He looks annoyed. And he did during the fight, during moments like that. And certainly made Tyron pay with putting his strikes together, you know, accordingly. So when someone tells Tyron that it's not only home runs that counts for points we may see a resurgence from him but he's just when he gets behind or what appears to be behind on the cards he he really he does swing for the fences and it's it's a bad habit i mean the guy's got so much skill to do that and the rest is is pause and readable i just wanted you to write in the comment section who you got winning between him and his teammate and champion Usman as Burns is now the number one contender and I thank you all for watching and I had fun making this hopefully you had fun watching it my patreon links and everything else will be uh, in the description below thanks for watching cheers